Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on Electronics 101, we're going to be talking about active filters, as opposed to the last filter video I did about passive filters. This is about active filters. Active filters are different from passive filters in that they um, they require active components. In this case, we're going to be talking about the, act or the filters that use the active component, the op amp which if you've seen my video on op amps and uh, their analog purposes you know acts as an amplifier and does some other things we'll talk about in relation to filters but what makes it different from passive filters is that this allows for specific gain control and isolation of filter and output so we'll talk about that and why that's really useful in this video so with that let's go ahead and get started um, one quick thing this is an active filter meaning it requires an active power supply because the op amp requires a continuous power source as opposed to passive filters which are powered solely by you putting an input signal into them so just remember that's another reason these filters are active so with that let's go ahead and get started for real let's start with the low pass filter. We'll do a little refresher about filters. I'll skip the ideal filter. But the uh, low pass filter, remember, if I can draw these lines straight, there we go, has a bowed plot that looks like this. So you have an amplitude and it's moving along and then it curves and then steady. And I should have drawn that line a little longer. Let's try this again. Whoop. That's better. So here's your frequency. Here's your initial frequent, uh, your initial amplitude, your period of roll off, and this, of course, occurs at what point? That's right, the cutoff frequency. And then, assuming this is a, where is that pointing? Assuming this is a single order filter, which those are the only kind we're going to talk about in this video, this has a slope of negative six decibels per octave. So that's the low pass filter. It attenuates or reduces the amplitude of frequencies greater than the cutoff frequency and allows frequencies lower to pass or a low pass. See, clever. Okay. A low pass active filter looks something whoop, there we go, looks a little something like this. So here's your input, and then that's attached to a resistor, which we'll call R1, and then I'll put a node there, and then this is attached to the op amp, the negative or inverting input on the op amp and then this goes to another resistor and then this goes to a capacitor and then this is the output output and then the non-inverting just goes to ground the, that's R1 this is R2 and this is C1 <coughs> or just C because we don't have another capacitor okay now this is the active form of a low pass filter. This is the basic form. Now, if you watched my op amp video, you probably know I didn't talk about uh, this sort of amplifier. I'm going to do that in another video. This is negative feedback, as you can see. Um, positives tied to ground, that means uh, zero bias. But, oh wait, no, I did talk about this. What am I saying? <laughs> so, this is your basic amplification circuit. So what's happening is um, there's an input and it's passing into the first resistor and then going into the inverting input, which is also being regulated by the capacitor and is being fed back through by the other resistor. And so through this, you get a filter. Uh, FC, in this case, the cutoff frequency is 1 over 2 pi R2C try to make that look more like a C rather than an E. There we go. So R2C. Now, because this is one of the advantages of this being an active filter is that you can control the gain of this filter. And the gain is found 
by taking the ratio of R2 over R1. So if R2 is equal to R1, then you have a gain of 1, and you have a basic low-pass filter. Uh, you can amplify it, you can decrease the amplitude. I don't suggest you decrease the amplitude in the gain. That's bad for op amps, and I'll talk about that why in another video. But just take my word for it, and don't. Now, this is a first order. It's a first order filter. So, again, that results in the negative 6 decibels per octave roll-off or uh, not roll off, uh, decay slope. Remember that if you make this a second order, it decreases by 12 and then 18 and increasing multiples of 6. Now, let's talk a little bit more about how this active filter differentiates from the normal passive filter. I already mentioned that you can control the gain with the ratio between the two resistors R2 and R1. If you've watched the op amp or know anything about op amps, you know that they also act as buffers. So what this is effectively doing is isolating the input from the output in terms of current and voltage. So what you end up with is having a very isolated output so that the resistor and capacitor components, if you happen to pick values that would do this, um, would interfere with other things down the line. And what this does is it prevents that. It isolates it and it helps keep impedances, current consumption, and voltage consumption down to a minimum by, again, isolating everything, keeping everything separate. So that's a big advantage to having active filters. Okay, so that is the low-pass filter. Let's take a look at, let's move one page ahead, the high-pass filter. Oh, there should be a T there filter. There we go. And just a reminder as to what this looks like. We've got the bowed plot, which I will try to draw in proper scale. It looks something like this. That seems a little better. And draw in some dotted lines. Here's our amplitude. Here's our frequency. And right here is our cutoff frequency. And here we have, again, assuming this is a first order uh, filter, this is just 6 dB per octave. So it's exactly the same um, slope as the low pass filter, first order. Okay. <clears throat> the circuit for this looks a little something like this. So here's your input, and that's connected to a resistor which is node, and then we have the op amp here. Three. However, oh, no, uh, sorry, drawing the wrong one. I'm drawing the low pass filter again. What am I doing? Let's try this again. It's the capacitor first. There we go. Then the resistor, which is then connected to the op amp. That's a terrible op amp. Looks more like an AND gate. There we go. Ah, it's much more pointy. There we go. This goes to ground. This is connected to a resistor. And again, this is negative feedback. And there's our output. So this is R2. Here's R1. And here's our capacitor. And the frequency cut off is 1 over 2 pi R1 C1 in this case because you're looking at the adjoining uh, RC pair <coughs> and again gain is exactly the same it's R2 over R1 so as you can see <coughs> it's exactly the same at, or it's pretty much the same as a low pass filter um, just different RC term in the cutoff frequency calculation, the slope is the same, the gain calculation is the same, and the way this works is exactly the same. It's charging this capacitor, and if the charge becomes too full, it won't let anything more through. And the resistors provide gain feedback. So that's the high pass filter. Now, if you remember, there is one other filter. That is the band pass 
filter, which lets through a specific bandwidth. And let's draw the boat plot for this. Here's frequency, here's amplitude. Now I've got to draw two of these. I shouldn't have done that. I don't know how long I'm going to draw this. So slope roll, there we go. Pretty good so far. Then roll and slope. That looks pretty even, if I do say so myself. There's our frequency. Put in the dotted lines, because that makes everything better. More dotted lines. There we go. And then we've got our two frequencies of interest. I put that in the wrong place. Let's try and get rid of those. There we go. Ooh, really wrong. Sorry about that. There we go. That's better. <coughs> so here's your lower frequency, and here's your higher frequency. Uh, the lower frequency, if you remember, corresponds to the high pass filter, and the higher frequency corresponds to the low pass filter. And then you've got the slopes here 6 dB per octave, which label that OCT, and then this is just negative 6 dB per octave because they're heading in opposite directions. Now, there are two ways you can design this filter. The first is more compact, and it's again just combining the two filters. So you have the input here, which goes right to a capacitor then to the resistor, which then ties to the, oop, I should leave some room for the node, there we go, which then feeds to the op amp, negative, positive, positive just goes off to ground, this is attached to a resistor here, that's our output, there we go, and then the capacitor up here. So we've combined the high pass and the low pass filters. I'll call this C2, R2, C1, and R1. So everything is paired nicely together. Now, there are three equations you have to keep in mind for this. Uh, the lower frequency is given by 1 over 2 pi R1, C1, and the upper frequency is given by 1 over 2 pi R2, C2. And the third equation being the gain equation. So what you have to do is balance, if you if you do design your bandpass filter in this way, you have to balance your frequency of interest, uh, the higher or the lower, with the gain, because the RC pair has some impact on the gain equation. Those two resistors are going to change your calculations. So, just something to keep in mind. That's three equations and four unknowns. So, you'll have to make something known. Uh, so, that's one way. That's the more compact way. Um, all the gain in this system is controlled at the same time. You can only control the gain of this individual system. However, you can design it in another way. And let's see if I can be clever about this. Oop. Keep scrolling. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with the high pass filter. Then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to make another page and paste it. Then I'm going to come back up. I'm going to do this again for the low pass filter. Copy. I'm getting pretty good at this. Of course, I should be at this point. There we go. And then we just tie these together. There we go. Uh, so R1, so C1, C2, R4, R3. <coughs> and in this case, FL works out to 1 over 2 pi R1 C1, and the upper in this case is 1 over 2 pi R4 
for C2. And gain is still... Oh, no, wait. Gain for the low-pass filter, so gain for the higher frequency, is... Why am I writing G? R4 over R3, and then gain for the lower there we go, is R2 over R1. Remember that the higher frequency is attributed to the so I don't know why I drew these backwards but that goes to that and that goes to that. So with this you can control the individual gain of each step. So you can make the gain for the low pass filter greater than the high pass filter or the high pass greater than the low pass and you can do all sorts of wacky and cool things with your filter with this bandpass filter so you change up that bode plot a bit you can if I went back up to that bode plot you can make this go at a weird angle or do some weird shapes it's all really cool with this so again two options for the bandpass filter you've got the more compact way and then the more controlly way and so that is it for basic um, basic active filters. That's what I'm doing, this basic active filters. Uh, I know that there are a couple other ways to do active filters, and there are actually a couple other ways to do passive filters. So what I want to do is a couple, I want to do two more videos, one on passive filters where I explore some other designs, and then one on active filters where I examine some other designs for active filters. So with that, uh, I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.